today's video, we'll be exploring how to aggregate multiple values, sum, average, and beyond, in one seamless process. We'll dive into three detailed examples to show you how versatile and powerful these techniques can be. First, we'll use the status bar and functions to quickly sum and average your data at just a glance. Then, we'll explore how to leverage pivot tables for more dynamic and customizable aggregations. Finally, we'll demonstrate the power of Power Query to handle complex data transformations and aggregations effortlessly. By the end of this video, you'll have the skill to handle any data challenge that comes your way with confidence and precision. So here's an example of how we can take a table, let's say we want to aggregate the ages, and put it into something like this where we would have uh, maybe the average, the median, the min, max. I'll go through a couple examples to see how we can do it. And they're going to range from getting the information from the status bar, from formulas to a pivot table, to even using Power Query. So let's see how we can do this. Now let's say we wanted to get the aggregate of the age. So I'm going to click over here on the age column. And you can see down here we've got our average already, our counts, our numerical counts, min and max. Now, if right, right click, this is how you can put this into your status bar. You can see the check marks here. It gives you the values. And the nice thing about this is if I wanted to put it into my cells, I can just click on it. So I'll click on that average. Now let's type average here. We'll type average and then press tab. And I can just paste it in there and it'll show up. And the same for the other values, right? So I have the sum here. I'll click on sum and just type sum here. And I can use the keyboard shortcut control V and paste that value in there, you can see that. And I can do the same for min and max. Let's do min and let's do max, All right? And I'll just put the min and max there, select the column here, uh, click on min, 18's here, control V to paste over max, select my column E here, click on max there, and then control V to paste that, and that's there. One thing you notice that it doesn't have the median. You can see here, there's no median. If I right click my status bar, there's no median. So let's put a pin in that one. And we, what we can do is we can use formulas here. So we'll, another way to do it is you can add formulas, right? You put sum, select on column E, press enter. You got my sum there. Press for average, average, click on average here. Select column E, press enter, uh, min, press tab, click on column E, press enter, and the same for max, right? Max, press tab, and select column E, press enter. Whoops, that was the date. Max, click on that max, double click. Call me, press enter. And of course, there is a median. So press, type in median, press tab, click on that, and you've got median, right? And so the nice thing about formulas, of course, is it changes dynamically. This won't change. You know, if you go down here, select that, you're going to have to copy and paste it again, right? So if you had 100 here, you can see that changed all the values there, but it didn't change that, of course. So that was using the status bar and formulas. Let's try to do it with a pivot table. So I'm going to sheet two here, and I'm going to turn this into a pivot table and see how we can do it with a pivot tables. The nice thing about pivot tables is you can slice and dice it. It's really nice to move things around easily. So let's try a pivot table. I can click anywhere in the value here. Make sure all the data is in contiguous cells. There's no blanks anywhere. And I'm going to go back up here. And what we need to do is go to insert and pivot table. And Excel's smart enough to figure out, you know, where is my pivot table? A1 to E2, E201. There's 200 records here. So it's A1 to E201 down there. And let's put the pivot table into this existing worksheet. I'll just put it here in H4. Click OK. And now all we need to do is bring the age down a couple times. When I put the age down, it's going to sum it. So we had our sum earlier, 9069. If I go back here, remember it was 9069. If I wanted to get the other values, all I need to do is bring them in here. And I'm going to change it later on, okay? We have some of age 2, age 3, age 4, and age 5, right? And so all I need to do is I can either click in here and click my drop down and go value field settings. Let's say I want an average. Click on that. Click OK. That one's the average. How about this one? Let's do the median. And we don't always have to go down here. We just can go here, right click, and summarize values. Well, let's do as a min. And how about this one? Sum of values. Let's do that as a max. So what you'll notice that there is no median, right? So if I click that, right click, summarize value, there is no median. And I'll put a link to a video where I did it where you can actually put a median in the pivot table, uh, but you can't find it here in a regular pivot table. Uh, there is a workaround, so I'll put a link in the description. So I'll get rid of this last one because it really doesn't serve us any purpose here for this example. But the nice thing about pivot tables is now you can slice and dice and put it into a matrix. Let's say that I want to find out 
what are the values here for the state. If I put state here in rows, it's going to tell me that. So my the sum of the state, which doesn't really make any sense, is 2216. But the ages, the average of the age is about 49 here. The minimum is 19, the maximum is 70. So it gives you a little bit of way to slice and dice it. And that's a nice way to aggregate. So there's my second example. My third example is going to be with Power Query. So let's go into my sheet three here. Same data. Let's put this into Power Query. And the nice thing about this is it also lets you update it kind of dynamically. So I'm going to go under Power Query, go to Data, Data from the Table and Range. It's going to create a table first and then bring it to Power Query. Click OK. So the Power Query editor shows my table here. I had some previous tables here earlier, so that's why I have Table four here. Uh, but I need to make a, a duplicate of this. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that, and I'm going to reference Table four to bring out the values where I want to see maybe the records here, John, male, Florida, weight 198, age 100. But I want to see other columns that show the count for the state, the average for the state of Florida, uh, the minimum and maximum. So how do I do that? What I need to do is merge it with the table above. So with that table selected, go to Merge Queries, and I'm going to merge the queries based on state, click on state here. This is table 4.2, and I'm going to merge it with table 4 here, also the state column, and click OK. It's going to bring up another column here where I can expand it. So click on Expand, and what I want to do is click on the Aggregate button, and it will give me the first thing it will do is sum of the age. I don't need that, but click on the checkbox, and then also let's scroll down a little bit, and click on that, and click on this drop-down. Right? The drop-down will give you the aggregation options. Deselect some, we'll do median, min, max. Let's count all of them and click outside of that, click OK, and we're going to have all our values here now, the ones that we wanted to compare against. So now we have our average. I'm going to call this a state, state average. I'll just, I'll just give a short name here. We'll call this one state median, state median. State min, state max, and then state count. Hit press enter, close and load. It's going to load both of these, I think, but let's, uh, let's call this one. Let's give this a different name. Table 4 will probably load on this tab here, but I'll delete that later. Click close and load. And it's going to come up and load it on to the new worksheets here. Oh, it didn't. So that's good. So it's a connection only. So I'm going to change this one. Right click and I'm going to load this to a worksheet, to a table in a new worksheet. Click OK. A new worksheet shows, should show up. Here it goes. And I've got John. Oh, he's 100 here. So this is a good example of where we can change it later on. Let's say he's not 100. And we can change that and makes it dynamic or we can refresh it. But it shows our state median, 44, minimum is 19 to 100. If I go back to my pivot, and I changed this earlier, so let's pull in the Texas here, or the state here for the rows. And I have Florida, and we have 19 and 100, and the average is 47.6, which is 48. But that reflects it here, 47.66667. So you can see 47.66667. And the nice thing about pivots is it also is dynamic. If I made that back to 47, press enter, and I right click on refresh here, it's going to change those values there. It's no longer 100 as the maximum for Florida. If I go here, and you can see that's changed here, but if I changed it for here, make them go back to 47 here, go back to my aggregate where it called it up from Power Query, just right click and click refresh, and you can see the values change. For 49 and 647. So that's the way we can aggregate it in Power Query. It's a nice little feature that it has there. We can further pull in uh, two tables and do some aggregations. So those are the kind of examples that we can aggregate data in Excel uh, with three examples. One using the status bar and formulas, this other one using pivot tables, and of course using our Power Query option. We hope you feel more confident in handling your data now. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more data tips. Thanks again for watching and happy data touching. Catch you in the next video.